Happy Thanksgiving! Mr. Bill Poker Peeps, welcome to the vlog. It is an absolutely beautiful, gorgeous fall day in North Texas, and this is Thanksgiving week. Oh yeah, baby. Thanksgiving is my absolutely favorite holiday. What other holiday are you encouraged to eat, watch football, nap, eat again, nap again? <laughs> and then go play poker on Black Friday. I mean, it is just fantastic. Not only that, of course, but then to think about all the things that you're blessed with and to be grateful and thankful, it just makes your life better. And speaking of being grateful and thankful, I had a really, really fun week playing poker. Uh, three sessions that I'll go over. One was a Johnny Vibes meetup game at the hideaway. Uh, the other one was a challenge I did at Windstar. We'll talk about that in a minute. And the other one was I played in a 6K guaranteed tournament at Rockets that I won the entry in with my straight flush a few weeks ago. And that was interesting also. So let's talk about some poker. Let's talk about some hands. Here we go. So the Johnny Vibes meetup game uh, was on a Wednesday night. I actually played in my league first and then I went over there late. Um, the game was at the Hideaway in Carrollton. If you're in the Dallas area and you haven't checked out the Hideaway, you need to do it. It's a really, really good club. I actually didn't get to play with Johnny in any games at all. Uh, I did get to talk to him for a few minutes and I also got to talk to a number of people who were vlog watchers of mine. In fact, there was a number of people there that said they were there only because they saw on social media that I posted that Johnny was going to be there and come to the meetup game and come to the highway. So uh, a lot of new people to the hideaway and hopefully I had a little bit to do with that. Probably the highlight of the night was simply talking to Johnny's wife, Olga. What a very, very, very nice lady she is. We talked about how it's tough being a wife of a poker player and a vlogger and all those things, but really, really an awesome person. Johnny, you got a good one, man. So I did a challenge at Windstar. I like to do challenges. It makes you expand your thinking and do things that you wouldn't otherwise do. So one of my leaks personally is that I don't three bet enough pre-flop. Friday night, I just got to Windstar. I'm gonna try something different tonight. I'm gonna try a challenge where I can't call before the flop. It either has to be uh, bet, check, raise, or fold. That would be interesting. I think I saw it on Poker Simple, and they said they got it from Andrew Nini. So we'll see how it goes. So I thought, man, that sounds like a really, really good one, especially for somebody who doesn't three bet enough pre-flop. So I did that challenge with these rules. I could bet, I could check, I could fold, or I could raise. Now, with one exception, if I was three bet or four bet, then I was allowed to call that and probably set mine uh, would be the reason I'd be doing that. That was the one exception where I could call. So I thought this was a very interesting challenge, and here are some of the hands that I played. All right, so in this 1-3 game, I folded the first orbit kind of intentionally so I wouldn't look like a real loose player, at least not to start with. Uh, in the P1 with $295, I got five of spades, six of spades. Uh, the under the gun limped. I raised it up to 15, and there ended up being six of us at $15. The flop has 93 in the pot, and it comes 775. Uh, I make it $45 and everybody folds. Hey, that worked out pretty good. So then I played a number of hands where people would limp to me, I would raise, I would either bet the flop and win, or I would just give up uh, when it was just a really, really bad board. So being the aggressor makes you constantly make the decision that says, do I want to continue? Do I want to give up? Do I want to uh, delay uh, on a board where you hit? Uh, so constantly making those decisions because you're the aggressor, which is really, really a good thing. I'd rather be the aggressor and, and get to drive the bus rather than having to be the one who has to make a tough decision and put more money in the pot when somebody else is driving. 
and you also have to make decisions about hands that which you would normally play but now you're not going to play because you decide not to raise them for example i was in middle position one i can't clubs queen of spades i had 355 dollars on under the gun very very tight player makes it 20. i simply folded it's not worth raising that up to 60 65 dollars uh to a tight player who probably has a very very strong hand all right so one of the rules was if i was in the big blind and it was checked to me i could actually check that's what happened on this hand. I'm on the big blind. King of clubs, five of spades. I have $360. There's three limpers to me. I decided to just go ahead and check it. The flop with $12 in the pot. Bingo, bongo. Ten of diamonds, five of diamonds, five of hearts. Uh, the small blind bets out for 20. I make the call. The other two players fold. The turn with $52 in the pot is the queen of hearts. Uh, he checks. I make it 25. He makes the call. Uh, the river with 102 in the pot is the queen of diamonds and he leads out for 75. I don't believe that he has a full house. He might have a flush, but he doesn't have a full house, I don't think. And so I go ahead and make the call and I am good when he has a uh, king of diamonds, two of diamonds for the diamond flush. All right, this next hand, I have pocket sixes uh, with $490. I'm in middle position two. Uh, the P1 makes it $15. I raise it up to 35, small blind calls, and the plus one makes the call also. So the flop with 108 in the pot comes Jack of Diamonds, Nine of Clubs, Eight of Diamonds. I don't like this at all. Uh, it's all over their range. <laughs> and it goes check, check, check. The turn is the Ace of Diamonds. I maybe could have taken a stab at this one, but I decided, you know what, I put enough money in. Uh, if I hit a six, that's fine. If I don't, I'm just gonna give up on this one. The river is the Two of Clubs. Um, the small blind checks. The P1 bets 50. I fold, we both fold. So here was an example of, I took the betting lead, I was the aggressor, and I decided after the flop I don't like it, and I simply was not gonna be the aggressor and put any more money in the pot. All right, the next one, another rule. Uh, I'm in the plus one with $300, I have pocket sevens. The under the gun limps, I make it 15. Uh, there's a caller, and then the cutoff, three bets it to 50. I'm allowed to just call now. I do make the call, I'm the only one. This hand is played against Raymond, who's a reg at Windstar, um, where I play a number of hands against him in this particular session. Anyhow, the flop with 122 in the pot comes eight of diamonds, nine of diamonds, 10 of diamonds. I flop open-ended straight flush draw, but I'm on the low end. He has shown strength, so he's probably better than me. <laughs> I check, he makes it $90. I go all in. I'm too strong here on the draw, and maybe I have, can take advantage of my fold equity here. I cannot, though, because he doesn't have enough money. He only has $245. He makes the call. He has king of clubs, king of hearts. The turn is the three of diamonds. Bingo, bongo for me. Rivers three of hearts. And yes, I stack off Raymond uh, with a really, really great flop for me. Even better turn. All right, this next hand, I'm in the big blind with Ace of Hearts, Jack of Clubs. I have $750 now. I'm only into the game for three. Uh, there's five limpers to me. I make it 18. In retrospect, this is too small. I should make it more than that. And I get two callers. The flop with 63 in the pot comes Ace of Spades, Nine of Clubs, Five of Hearts. I decide I'm going to delay my C bet on this one. And I check, but unfortunately, the other two check also. The turn is the 10 of clubs. I make it $25 into 63. Both of them call. The river with 113 in the pot is the jack of hearts. I lead out for 35 and a middle position player goes all in for 130. The other guy folds. I don't really like it here, but I'm very, very under repped. Uh, I make the call. He has 7-8. He was open-ended, and he hit the straight. All I had to do is bet the flop, and he would be gone. But I, you sometimes have to mix things up and play them differently. You know, I've gotten paid off many, many times by delaying my C-bet also. So just didn't work out on this hand. All right, another hand against Raymond. He had a rough night this night. I have pocket aces under the gun. I now have $800. Uh, I make it 15, and there are three callers, uh, including the small blind and big blind. The flop with 60 in the pot comes 663. Uh, it checks to me. I make it $20. In middle position one is Raymond. He makes the call. Also the small blind calls. The turn with 120 in the pot comes seven of diamonds. 
Um, it checks to Raymond. He makes it 80. Uh, the one guy folds. I then shove all in for his effective stack of 160. He makes the call. The river is the jack of clubs. Uh, I show my pocket aces and he mocks. So obviously he did not have a six. So the results were pretty darn good. Uh, not only financially, but uh, mentally also. All right, the no call challenge was successful tonight. Cashing out for 960, was in for 400, so 565 winner. From the poker standpoint, this was really good for me because I played fewer hands, but the hands I played, I played much, much more aggressively. Uh, I also realized just how bad some hands are. Uh, King nine plus, just awful. Uh, you're gonna, if you're gonna raise with them, you're gonna get three bet, you're gonna have to fold them every single time. There's some other ones like that too. And I also realized, I guess not realized, but reinforced the fact that Playing in position is really, really important, especially if you're going to three bet or four bet or whatever. So play in position. I did those things. It was successful. I was really glad I did this challenge and I will be doing this one again. All right, as you guys remember, a few weeks ago, I got a straight flush the first time I ever played at a club called Rockets, another one in Dallas. If you haven't tried it out, come try it out. A really, really good place. So part of what I won for getting that straight flush was an entry into their 6K guaranteed tournament. It was actually a $110 tournament, 6K guarantee. They crushed the guarantee. They ended up getting 94 entries. It was 3,300 for first place, 18 for second, 950 for third. They paid 10 spots of the 94 entries. Uh, it was 10,000 chips to start, 15 minute level. So absolutely a turbo and here we go with the hands at this tournament. So I played a number of hands in this tournament against a guy named Joe, Crazy Joe from Windstar. Good guy, uh, fun to play with, uh, likes to mix it up a lot. All right, with blinds at 100, 200, I'm in the plus one with pocket queens. I have 10,000 chips. The under the gun raises it up to 500. I call Crazy Joe from Windstar uh, calls in middle position one and the cutoff calls. So the flop with 2300 in the pot comes 972. Uh, it goes check. I make it 1800. Joe shoves all in for 6200. Uh, fold, fold. I call. Joe has pocket tens. Um, I knew he would be very, very surprised when I turned over pocket queens because I only called the original raise. I was actually very surprised when he turned over pocket tens because I thought he would raise preflop also. Uh, the board came with a king and a jack and I won the hand and I stacked Crazy Joe off. So Joe did a rebuy and he got seated exactly the same seat as he was before. And I played this next hand against Joe also. Blinds are 150, 300. I have ace of spades, seven of spades with 17,000. I'm on the button. I make it 600. Crazy Joe in the small blind makes the call and the big blind calls also. So the flop, 1,800 in the pot comes eight of hearts, six of diamonds, two of spades. It checks to me. I make it 600. Uh, and Joe makes the call, the other guy folds. The turn is now the six of spades, giving me the nut flush draw. Uh, <clears throat> he checks, I make it 1,200, and he makes the call. Uh-oh, <laughs> I think he has an eight here. The river, bingo, bongo is the four of spades. He checks, I make it 2,200, and now Joe shoves all in for 7,600. He could have a full house here, but I've got the nut flush. I'm not going anywhere. I call, Joe turns over six jack for three sixes, and I stack old crazy Joe off for a second time. All right, this next hand was an interesting one. Blinds are 200, 400. I have pocket deuces in the small blind. Um, somebody raises up to a thousand. It ends up being six of us at a thousand. The flop then, with 6,000 in the pot, comes two of diamonds, eight of diamonds, eight of clubs. I flop a full house. That's pretty darn good. Oh, bingo bongo. <laughs> I check it. Crazy Joe bets 2,800. Oh yeah, he'd bought in again and got seated at our table again. Unbelievable. Uh, the P1 then raises it up to 5,800. It comes back to me. All right, I'm not gonna mess around here. The P1 has shown extreme strength by raising it again. 
I shove all in. Uh, Joe folds and then the P1 tanks and tanks and tanks and folds and he folds an eight. I can't believe it. He folded eight five. Wow. That's a fantastic fold, especially since he had a whole bunch of chips. He had 25,000, I had 24,000. Uh, that's a heck of a fold. All right, you can't win every one though. So at 500, 1,000, I'm in the small blind with king of spades, queen of spades. Uh, it folds around to the button who goes all in for 8,000. He had previously pushed all in uh, when he was small blind and I was big blind. I also had king, queen of spades, and I folded that time. This time, I make the call. He has ace of diamonds, jack of clubs, and the board runs out. Eight of diamonds, six of clubs, two of spades, seven of spades, so I turn, flush draw, 10 of clubs. I turned 15 outs, couldn't hit it, and he took a significant part of my chips, 8,000 out of my, however many I had, 25,000, I don't know. All right, with blinds at 1,000, 2,000, I have 27,000 chips. I am in the hijack with ace of diamonds, 10 of hearts. It folds to me, I make it 6,000. The button goes all in for only 3,000 chips. Everybody else folds. He has ace three to my ace 10, and the board runs out two, four, five, four, six. He hits the straight, 9K in that pot. I sure would have liked to have those chips, but I didn't get them. All right, we're going down to two tables, uh, what, 20 players left? I have 88K, uh, which is the chip lead at my table. I don't know about these other guys coming. Looks like Larry Everett loves to come to our table, and he's got a ton of chips. Larry, say hello. 69 is all? Oh, okay, it's only 69. I got 88, so I got Larry covered. You gotta like that. All right, good luck, bud. So with blinds at 4,000, 8,000, and that's a significant portion of my stack, probably I had uh, five or six big blinds. I won four hands in a row by shoving all in, and there was no resistance. Now I did have very, very good hands, and I wouldn't have minded to call on a couple of them, but I increased my stack by 48,000, which is more chips than I started with on this little run. Hey, final table, and I got a bunch of chips. I mean, right here, I'm not sure, uh, but I got a bunch, so let's go. So with eight players left, blinds are at 5,000, 10,000. I have 240,000. I have pocket eights in middle position, too. The under the gun only has 80,000 chips, which is eight big blinds. He goes all in. Uh, comes to me, I shove all in as to get everybody else out and everybody else folds. He has <laughs> nine of clubs, six of spades against my pocket eights. The board runs out, jack, nine, four, king, seven. Ugh, boy, I win that hand and I have a big, big chip lead. Instead, now I'm back at the middle of the pack and blinds are so big that it's not even poker anymore. With six players left and blinds at 10K, 20K, I'm on the button with 140,000 with king of spades, jack of spades. It folds all the way around to me. I shove all in. The big blind calls with ace of clubs, 10 of spades. He only has 60K. Uh, the board runs out 10, 9, 7, 4, 4. So he beat me on that one. Oh, I'm down to 80,000 chips. And just a few hands later, I'm in the MP2 with 90,000 chips. I have king of spades, queen of spades. The under the gun, who was now the big stack with like 350,000, uh, raises it up to 60K. I shove all in. Uh, he makes the call. And he has about the worst hand that I could possibly see. He has pocket kings. Ouch. The board runs out a 7 7 9 10 And I am out in sixth place at the Rockets tournament. Mm, very disappointing. The results, very, very disappointing for me. Chip leader going to the final table, although the chip leader only had 15 or 20 big blinds because of the blind structures just being so, so fast. As you guys heard, I took a bad beat at the final table or I would have been way, way, way the chip leader, but when the blinds are so big and you take a bad beat, <laughs> all of a sudden, bing, I am out. We started to try and do a chip chop, uh, couldn't agree on it. That's too disappointing for me because I would have gotten over $1,000, which is better than third place money. Uh, but we couldn't agree, so it is what it is. Disappointing. I still played well. I was happy with that, but disappointing with the results. I will say, I wish that the clubs that do the 
turbos, and there's a number of them that I play at, would reward the people that get to the final table or very, very close to the end by slowing down the structure when it gets down to the end. For example, this structure went 5,000, 10,000, jumped to 10,000, 20,000, and then 20,000, 40,000, which is just, I mean, you're playing with absolutely no uh, poker at all. It's just, do you get a good hand and you can you shove? Uh, no poker. Even if they would slow that structure from 510 to 612 to 816 to 1020 to 1530 to 2040, they'd only add three levels. It would only add 45 minutes. It would actually allow us to have a little bit of more play. Uh, it would reward the people who were at the final table. So, you guys that are at smaller clubs and do these turbos, think about that. It would really, really reward the better players. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. I hope you learned something, at least one thing. I know I learned a number of things, especially at the challenge that I did. Again, it's Thanksgiving week. Billy and Morgan are here. Billy from Arkansas, Morgan in from Dallas. They're both staying for a number of days, so I am happy, happy, I'm thankful, I'm grateful for my kiddos and my family. In fact, I'm thankful and grateful for tons of things, and I'm glad that we have at least a holiday that we put it in our brain to remember those things. I would encourage you guys, every day, think about something that you're thankful and grateful for, at least a couple of things. I guarantee you, you'll be happier. I personally believe it also brings success, so do it. Oh, and the best thing about Thanksgiving, Black Friday. Yes, the girls go shopping. Billy and I go to Windstar. We'll be playing there all day long on Friday. Woohoo, loving that. So, with that, let's end this vlog. Thank you, thank you guys so much for watching and subscribing and talking to me at the Meetup Games and uh, sending me notes. I really, really appreciate all that stuff. You guys have a wonderful and blessed Thanksgiving and a wonderful and blessed week. I will see you guys next time. Bye.